All right now, so here's a preview from 2023 GovCon Conference. That's Travis. Hey! hey. Is a legend. Is your mic on? I don't know. You know what? I, I, should probably, I should probably turn this thing on. Huh? All right, there you yeah, go. That's what yeah, I, you know. Yeah, okay. Yeah. How's everyone this afternoon? How how are the morning sessions? Yeah. I, I stopped by all the different workshop rooms, so I saw people paying attention, taking notes, um, not on their phone, texting random people. So. <laughs> I, um, you know, I'm really happy to sit on stage today with my good friend, Mr. Travis Mack. And, um, you know, we've come to know each other for the last couple of years. Absolutely. And so um, tell yeah. us, how recently did you come down to the South Florida area? Well, first and foremost, um, you should all give yourselves a big round of applause. And I truly want to hear it. Come on now. Give it to yourselves. <laughs> give it to yourselves. You, you have put in the effort, you have spent the money, and you have invested in yourselves. And that is always a good bet. That is always a good wager. So first and foremost, thrilled uh, that everyone uh, is out here and uh, looking forward to passing on. Just, we just want to give it away, right? As much information as we can, we can give away, we want to give it, give it away. And so... Um, to answer your question, Eric, I've been down here um, three and a half, almost four years now. Um, I'm a transplant from Longview, Texas, right? I don't know, no one knows what Longview, Texas is, where the cows are big and the mosquitoes are bigger, right? All right? And, uh, and transplant over to California, where I spent 25 years uh, over in California. The military actually took me to the state of California, and I stayed there. And, uh, you know, about three or four years ago, um, you know, wanted to expand the business. And who better to lead the expansion uh, than, than myself? And so uh, came out here and, um, and, and, and stayed. Love Florida. Love South Florida. All right. Good stuff. Now, um, I know everyone has not listened to our podcast. <laughs> so for the people that don't know you and don't know your business, can you tell us? Sure about the organization that you've built over the last, uh, what, since 1999? Yeah, since 99. 99. Wow, I'm old. Yeah. I'm old. I'm old. <laughs> That's right. So tell us. <laughs> no, you're not supposed to agree with that. <laughs> no, listen, I'm just saying you've been around, you're seasoned. How about that? You're seasoned. <laughs> I'm seasoned. All right. That's a better way to put it. Um, let's see. I run um, a couple of organizations. Um, I run uh, the Sailors Corporation, and uh, the Sailors Corporation is an aerospace and defense organization. Uh, we support Army, Navy, Air Force, primarily the Department of Defense in the areas of engineering services, information technology, uh, logistics, um, and uh, test range management. And so we manage the test, uh, weapon system platform testing that goes on uh, for, those, for those agencies. Um, I also run an IT company, a commercial IT company by the name of Vallejo Networks. And basically we do the network administration, the cloud solution development, um, cybersecurity support for small and medium-sized businesses um, across, the, across the United States. So uh, pretty busy uh, with, with those two uh, endeavors and, uh, and, and a host more. Uh, so. And so uh, Travis is very humble, right? He didn't say anything about employee counts or revenue size and that kind of <laughs> stuff. You know, like, you know, you got to give yourself some credit. That's what the people want to hear. Right, How right. many employees you at now? So um, let's see. Salex is about 800 employees nationwide. Uh, That's right. That's right. Clap it up. 800 employees. Okay. Right. With um, doing over about 100 million in, in revenue. And uh, Vallejo is a growing um, organization. We have we do about twenty one, twenty two million dollars a year, and we have roughly about a hundred employees um, within that organization. So nationwide, I think I'm a little bit over nine hundred, almost a thousand, almost a uh, thousand employees, employees nationwide. So yeah. and it's all about the team. It's always, always, always about the team. So um, I can't I can't foot stomp on that enough. And uh, so, again, one of the things is uh, we do spend a lot of time together, so I know a lot of uh, what they're doing with the organization. And I had a chance to actually meet his leadership team 
two weeks ago. And so I, we sat down and spent time with his leadership team and met the different presidents of the different companies and also the program managers that are running some of these programs that are fairly large programs out there. Um, something else that I do want to mention, talk to us about some of the uh, M&A work that you've been doing over the last couple of years. Sure, sure. So, you know, as I've progressed in my, uh, in my career, and I want to say something, what you start out as isn't necessarily what you're going to finish as. And you really need to keep that in mind and understand that being flexible, I'm not saying give up on what you're doing, but understand the business environment changes and you're going to do one of two things. You're either going to change or you're going to die. Choose. Right? And so we have morphed and changed over the years and we do a lot of mergers and acquisitions which is basically private equity leveraged buyout 101. And so in a couple different verticals, um, I, I often um, joke with my marketing manager, Tyler, that we do leverage buyout across literally three different business verticals. One is the federal uh, aerospace uh, industry and where we target middle market government contractors, um, you know, with certain requirements. And then we also target small uh, IT companies uh, called managed security service provider, MSPs or MSSPs, um, for, you know, to, to come be a part of our organization. And then, of course, um, I didn't talk too much about the Greenwood Fund, but I'm into uh, commercial real estate private equity as well, and we buy self-storages and, and roll those up. And so I, I do a lot of M&A. Um, it is a skill that I've, I've acquired. Uh, M&A is a skill. Uh, but you need a team to be able to do it. And so those are kind of the three areas that I, I navigate between. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's never a dull day. I can, I can tell you that. And I got six kids, so. <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. I got a basketball team with a sub. <laughs> right? so, so anybody want to meet, meet us on the courts, let us know. All right? We, we will be there. We will be there. <laughs> Can you talk about the Net Simco um, acquisition? Sure. That was two years ago, right? Yeah. That was 2020? Yeah, 2021. Yep, yep. Uh, the Net Simco acquisition was uh, in the federal space, was very important to us. You know, we're trying to turn the ship a little bit, uh, and we're trying to be more nimble, and we're trying to address more customers um, across the uh, federal agency platform. So we acquired a company over in uh, Rhode Island uh, by the name of Net Simco, uh, added that to the Salex portfolio. Uh, which, which grew us uh, to over the $100 million mark. Uh, and we continue to look for uh, viable companies that can help us grow in the areas of capabilities, that can help us grow in the area of size and scale, that can help us grow uh, as we try to gain more capabilities within information technology. And so we were excited to complete the acquisition and it has helped, certainly helped us become a better company, a larger company, and we continue to look and we continue to try and uh, scale utilizing not only organic growth, right? Organic growth is going out, talking to the agencies and, you know, doing bids and proposals and scaling that way. That, that's called organic growth. The inorganic growth comes from our mergers and acquisitions groups, you know, and our team that helps us go out and execute these strategies. Can you say how much it was? <laughs> I, I, I got to call out numbers. <laughs> I like to call out the numbers. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think the, uh, the Net Simco acquisition was $35 million or something. There like you go. That. That's what I want to hear. Uh -oh. Okay, all right. That's what I want to get to. All right. All so right, you want to get the numbers. I mean, the you people want to numbers, hear numbers. The uh, people want to hear that okay, stuff, you know? Right. They want to well, know. Like, you know well, well, you well know. listen, you know, um, you know, sometimes we're a little coy about the numbers, but right. you know what? I'm amongst friends, so. There you go. I'm going to tell it to you like it is. That's right. And, you know, hey, whatever happens, happens, right? Yeah. We're going to give it away. We're giving it away. Now, all right, so now let's start. We'll go back to the beginning. Yeah. Right? 1999. Right, to 2004. Oh. Oh. Um, you told me something recently, and we discussed this when we were with Todd, about how you started and what you were doing when you first started. Can you share a little bit about that briefly? Well, um, I don't think anyone wakes up and says, hey, I want to be a federal contractor. <laughs> who, who wakes up with that as the first thought <laughs> that, they, uh, um, you know, that they come up with? 
And, and so, like many of you in the room, uh, you know, mine kind of morphed. I went into the corporate world. First and foremost, I'm, I'm a Navy guy, so all my Navy folks, yep, you know, I'm with you. Yep, give yourself a round of applause. Go Navy, right? Go Navy. Uh, and so, you know, I, I did the military, by the way, which was one of my best decisions that I ever made because I was a, a young hardhead coming out of East Texas and uh, needed the discipline, and so got that opportunity, took advantage of it, uh, which kind of guided me to, to where I was. So when I made the decision, so did the Navy, then when it got recruited to go into the corporate world, uh, and when I made the decision that I wanted to get into federal contracting, um, it really wasn't because I was sitting there with this moment, right, this surreal moment, saying, yeah, now I'm gonna go into federal contracting. I actually started out as an IT consulting company, right? And, and then I got a phone call uh, from a friend of mine uh, that was down supporting TRW at the time, and they said, hey, Travis, uh, you do IT support, right? I was like, yeah. Um, you know, would you be interested coming down and talking to TRW at the time before they got bought by Northrop Grumman? And they said, would you be interested to come down and give us your pitch presentation, give us your presentation, uh, because we need more small businesses. And, um, and so I went. Didn't have a clue. Didn't know anything about the DOD or whatever the case may be. But I knew I wasn't going to uh, pass up that opportunity. That's what I did know. And so went down there, gave them um, my capabilities presentation at the time. And again, now remember, I started off as an IT consulting firm, and so I want to make sure that you understand that you need to be flexible in what you are doing because paths change and you turn into different organizations. So that's the entree into the federal world uh, was, you know, going down to TRW and, and pitching that organization. And that's what's got me into federal contracting. Nice, nice. But you said that when you first started, though, uh, were you billable? Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. So tell people, what does that mean? Tell people what does that mean? Well, I mean, you start out using your own expertise and your own experience, right? And I had an expertise. Um, back th in those days, it was software quality assurance. I did a lot of software QA stuff. And so I was basically billable on the contract. Uh, and then, you know, we did a good job, right? Always do a good job, always finish your tasks. Your performance is what they measure you by, right? So you have to perform. You have to perform. No matter what you call yourself, no matter what socioeconomic category, it does not replace performance. So you must perform. So, so that's what we did. So yes, I was billable early on and, and then got an opportunity to add a person and you know, we did a good job. And they said, hey, you know what? Can you, can you expand a little bit? So, so we did, and then that led to person number two, um, and then that led to person number three. And then we took that past performance, and we leveraged that over to another subcontractor, which was uh, Northrop Grumman, right? So we went from TRW, and then Northrop Grumman bought TRW, and then we just kept leveraging that past performance. And we started out as a subcontractor. I want to be clear about this. I did not start out priming, okay? No, if you start out priming, you're fortunate. You start out, in my opinion, you start out as a sub. You start out as a subcontractor because it allows you to learn the ropes. And oh, by the way, you don't have the necessary infrastructure, right, built out in order to go and support a prime contract, right? Because it takes a lot of infrastructure in order to be able to support the federal government. Because what's the federal government's number one responsibility? To reduce risk, right? They're spending public dollars. So they must reduce risk. And they must be, they must understand what their industrial base looks like in order for them to reduce risk, which allows them to allocate dollars, which, oh, by the way, are your tax dollars, and you want the federal government to spend them accordingly, right? Appropriately. And so that is a very important item. And the way that you reduce risk is by credibility, is by performance, is by past performance. That's why the federal government is so adamant about you having past performance. Show me where you've done it before. And so now you were working with uh, Northrop Grumman. Yep. And um, so how did you go from three people to 10 to 20, right? What, was that, what did that look like? 
a slow process. <laughs> was that a, a year? A, a was it two process. years? No, five no, years? No, 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 five years. I, I, I have a common, I have a very common belief. In this business, and I'm going to be brutally honest with you, in this business, if you are not prepared to starve for five years, you probably shouldn't be playing this game. Let's, let's, let's understand that. There is a sacrifice each and every last one of you are making to be here in this room. There's a sacrifice to you trying to grow your business and putting in this. And so for the first five years, listen, I, I starved, worked, worked two, two restaurants job in the evening and did Salex during the day. And so it was not um, you know, an easy path by any stretch of the imagination. So I kind of you know, grinded it out. But at the end of the day, yeah, it took us you know, in 99, it was, it was me, right? All the way up to about 2004. In 2004, I think we had 10. Um, you know, 2004 to 2006, I think we put on another five or whatever the case may be. And then it just kept escalating after that. And then we got better at bidding. We kept building our infrastructure. If I don't tell you anything, please, folks, if you want to prime one day, build your infrastructure. Build your infrastructure. It's important for you to build your infrastructure. Because if you don't do it, you're never going to have, because you have to prove that, you're never going to have the opportunity to, to, to prime, um, you know, a good opportunity that can take you and catapult you to the next level. So there's something else that I want to talk about um, is a common thing that we hear about teaming, right? Um, joint venture, mentor proteges, like people mention those different programs. Sure. Which one of the ones did you think helped you the most? I, I would say teaming. Teaming first. You're always looking for partners because opportunities that you look at, you're n most of the time you're not going to be able to do all of it. So you got to look for viable teammates. Um, and, and that's a process. And you find teammates in this room, by the way. Every last one of you should know each other by the time that you leave here. That's, that's your number one objective. True enough, you want to come and get educated, but this is how you build your ecosystem, right? This is how you learn, you know, the structure of DOE. This is how you learn the organizational chart of DLA, right? This room is really important to you to build that ecosystem that you are going to rely on as you scale your business. So to answer your question, I would say teaming was number one for me, right? Because as we got bigger, we needed teammates to do the whole scope of work. Number two, I took advantage of the mentor protege program. I asked Northrop Grumman for everything. I'm sure they were sick of me. They were like, oh my God, here come Travis again. He's asking me for stuff. You know, look, if you're going to get a value out of me participating in a mentor protege program, I want something. Right? I mean, this is, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not just going to let you put me on a report and we not get anything for it. And I think people don't take advantage of it. You have to ask for things under the Mentor-Protégé program. So how did you approach Northrop Grumman to be a mentor for you? Well, we had performed on uh, a couple, uh, we were sub to them on a couple of contracts. And we thought it would be valuable to, to be a protege to Northrop Grumman for them to help us try to build our infrastructure. Because I was really focused on building my infrastructure. So it, it's a matter of, um, you know, we had performed. We kept going up to the supplier uh, conferences. And we were able to uh, convince them that we were a worthy protege at that time. You know, one thing that we talk about is being in the room. Yeah. Got to be there. You know, listen. Funny thing happens when you stand in the corner, nothing, <laughs> all right? So, so look, if uh, you can be shy over there all by yourself, and the one thing that bothers me sometimes, you know, you know, listen, if me and Eric go to a conference together, I ain't talking to Eric. I know him. I, I'm not talking to Kevin. I know Kevin. <laughs> I'm not trying to meet Kevin anymore. I know his mama, his daddy, his cousin. I know his son, right? I'm not trying to talk to them, right? But who I am trying to talk to is the lady, you know, that's next to me or the gentleman that's standing over, you know, in an area that I want to that I want to get next to. You have to meet new people, right? We all talk about your network, uh, is your net worth, right? We say that all the time. And then nobody wants to go out and talk to anybody. It just blows me away. I'm like, you're kidding me? And then you don't bring the proper tools when you go to a networking event. Who all has digital business cards here? 
Good. Who's all on LinkedIn in here? Good. Who's all trying to expand their LinkedIn connections? Everybody's hand should go up. Right? Everybody's hand should go up. Right? Who's going to follow up with every single business card that they received today? Right? That's, that's the game. That's the game. People do business with people that they know and they like. Simple as that. The federal government is no different. You have to build the relationship. You have to be in the room. Where else are you going to meet them? In your grocery store? No, they're over in California, right? Or they're on base. So where else are you going to meet them? So take advantage of the opportunity. Are you going to share with us your LinkedIn? Absolutely. <laughs> All right. My LinkedIn, Travis T. Mack, right? LinkedIn. And on Instagram, you know, I try to share a lot of small business ideas. It's important to me to give. So if you, if you want to ask me a question about your business, I'm going to give you my thoughts, but at the end of the day, you have to go and execute on it. I, I will tell you how I did it. I will tell you what I did. I will share with you. Um, you know, I gave some insight to my, my, uh, my friend here, my good friend Mark Homer, and shared some insight with him. He comes back to me and says, hey, you know what? I did exactly what you said, and now I'm, you know, I'm $400,000, and I'm driving my organization in the right direction. Right? Give him a hand, because he's working hard. This ain't easy, right? And, and so, but he said, hey, you know what? Let me, let me take you to dinner. Let me take you to lunch. Let me ask you a few questions because you can't, you know, you can't keep me all day. Let me ask you a few questions and gave him some insight and he went out and he executed and now he has a viable business that's growing. And, and, so, and so now he's coming back. He says, okay, I'm here. Now, what do I do next? And I'm going to say, okay, Mark, here we go. Here's what I did. Here's some ideas. Let me know if that works. Right? And you, you kind of keep that conversation. So you have to ask. You really do. You'll be surprised at the number of people that really want to help, that want to give you information. But first and foremost, you can't pull me away for two hours to hold a conversation with you. That ain't happening. Right? Second, you know what? Get me a coffee or something. You know? Come on, man. Take me to lunch. I, you know, I'm, I'm not that expensive. Right? But, you know, listen, it has to be mutually beneficial. Uh, for, for the both of us, and I'll be happy to share it because I want to give it away, right? I want to give as much information, and I want to deliver it to, to everybody that I can. So you can follow me on Instagram to get back to that because you know I'm long-winded. You can follow... <laughs> you don't have to agree with me. Yes, I'm just saying yes. <laughs> you, you can follow me on Instagram at uh, Travis.Mac, M-A-C-K, dot C-E-O. And I try to give away as much small business, as many small business ideas and concepts and thoughts and things that you don't think that you can ask anybody else. Because I've been there, right, trying to figure out, you know, what to do here. How do we go there? Please, I'll, 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 I'll do my best. I'll do my best. Thank you, sir. They cut us off. Are we done? <laughs> we were just having a good time. No, I know. We, we got to go, man. Let's, let's say, uh, say some parting words for the people before we go. Um, first, what you do is difficult. Embrace that. If it was easy, everyone would do it, okay? You have to find something that keeps you going. I often say during my journey, I was on several occasions 90 days away from closing the doors, right? And you lie there in that bed and you say to yourself, man, it'd be so much easier if I did this. It'd be so much easier if I did that. But if you don't believe, no one else will. And so I say, believe in yourself, go out, get dirty, right, grind it out, 